all right how's it going guys hope you're all doing well so welcome to the first in the series this is a brand new thing we're doing here this is our let's make series yes i'm going to do a whole host of these but in this one we're going to be doing funky house yes yeah, so what i'm going to do is just i'm just going to upload like weekly episodes of these and um yeah i'm just going to put everything available on patreon and on my website so all of like loops and samples will be available but yeah let's just knock up a funky house groove then i've done some recordings i've actually prepped some samples ready so we've got all this these are the unprocessed loops i'm going to actually leave the processed loops as well they'll be available as well yes yeah, so we're at 123 bpm which is like quite slow but it's a uh, yeah for this sort of like funky groove eh? like it works nicely right so we'll get the kick in and kind of process as we go as well so um yeah let's give this a play all right nice so yeah let's do a little bit of process and we won't go crazy but um yeah let's get an eq we've cut it um yeah so we've cut 40 hertz there so we'll take a listen Yeah, that's cleaned up nicely there. So another thing we can do, we can add a bit more like power and a bit more fatness to this kick. So we're going to use the drum bus. Put this actually before the EQ. So we're going to turn this off and on and we'll hear the difference it makes here. So I'll turn it off. Right, and we'll try it on. Yeah. Really nice. We can even bump it up to medium. So let's try that. little bit of crunch there say 10 percent maybe turn it down a bit more on here so there you go that's a good start right we'll leave that there and we'll get this across one more actually because we're going to make a sort of like a minute sort of groove loop here right that's a good start so let's go back into the pack and uh, where should we go from um we'll start with the drums so let's just go through right so we've got this clap one so we'll get clap one in first We've got a second one as well that we're going to layer up. Cool. A nice sort of snap to it. And like the other one's got like a sort of live sound. Like they sort of layer up nicely. It's a quick EQ. Cool, right. It needs reverb then. So we might as well do it now. We'll just use a stock one actually. We'll just uh, bring this decay time down. See about there. If I put this in a group, that's what I'll do, and I'll add the reverb onto this. Right, we'll try that. Nice, that. We'll maybe turn it down on, like, the volume here, yeah? Maybe a couple of dB. Yeah, that'll do for now. Right, okay, second clap. Let's get straight in. So there we go. We can do the same EQ. It'll be about the same. And we'll take a listen to it. Right, I'll hear that better with the reverb, so we'll put it in that group. Yeah. Maybe down a bit more. I think that's working nicely. So we'll try everything there. That's cool. So I'm going to put an EQ on the actual clap folder here. So I've just got a preset that I use like when I'm like jamming like this. Yeah, it's just my Carl Clap EQ. All I'm doing, take a minus 4 dB, 3.50 kilohertz. And this here... 5.20 kilohertz i've shown this before but it's taken out minus 10. right so i'll play this so you can hear it then right this is off right i'll turn it on there you go Right, so we can add a glue compressor this as well and like sort of glue these two clap sounds together so uh, yeah we'll do that now and we'll just use the bog standard air glue compressor like the default setting and uh, yeah let's pull the threshold there we go 
to about 4 dB there and we'll just make it back up. So we're making the volume back up there. Okay, next, right, we've got a hat loop then, so we'll try this. So we'll listen to it on its own. It's like quite housey, but it's got like a sort of live sound as well, which is good for funky house. I'll try that with there, just the claps. Yeah, really like that. So uh, EQ, just a basic one. Okay, cool. I've maybe put a little bit of a LFO tool on this or side chain. It's just the same thing. Maybe just to give it like a pumping effect. We'll try it. Yeah, so I'm leaving the project file available for this uh, like video as well. So, so I can just freeze and flatten this. I can process other things. And uh, yeah, because I know not everyone like, has some of these plugins, but I'll make sure they're available like processed. So you'll get everything here. You can get the best of both worlds. I'll just freeze and flatten it. It's got that processing on it. Get that across like that. And uh, yeah, we can group it up. We'll give it its own group. And we'll get some reverb on it. I'm just going to delete that for now. We don't really need it. Right, yeah, we'll get the reverb on it. Okay, back into the folder then. Um, well, we've got a 909 hat here. So I'm doing like a combination of like sort of live sounds and sort of house sounds. Um, if it was like funky disco, I'd try and stick with more live stuff. But yeah, we're going to get this kind of like nice and housey sounded. So we've got a really nice 909 here. Try that with a kick. Yeah. Already sounding housey, so that's really good. Once again, EQ, nothing complicated. Don't like to complicate things at the beginning of it, like an idea. There you go, just all that unwanted stuff, that's all we need to do. And I can go into this folder which has reverb on it, so we'll try that again. Maybe pan this right, this one here. Okay, cool, back into the folder. Baker loop, all right, let's get this in. Yeah, so this has got like a nice live sound to it, um, but it works well with the sort of housey sort of 909 stuff. Like you can blend them together and they sound really cool. So um, I'll play the shaker loop. I mean, it's live-ish sound and whether it was a live recording or not, I don't know, but it's definitely got a live sound to it. So um, mix with everything else, like the hats, um, it's, it fits really nicely. Yeah, so once again, into the hats folder, it's got the reverb on it. And if there's any like sort of peak frequencies, we can kind of quickly deal with them. Yeah. Cool, all right. So LFO tool. Okay, I'll freeze and flatten. So I put side chain on it with the LFO. And there's this pan, let's have a look. Yeah, so I've panned it left, 15, just to get it sort of like a bit wider. Um, okay. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Let's just keep going. So, snare perk. Okay, this is like a kind of jack and snare. Yeah, this works nicely with the groove. So, we'll take a listen. And with a clap. Okay, come down. Once again, EQ.
Yes, I can group this up and also get reverb on this. I'm just activating that folder, which will put reverb on everything. So we'll try this snare perk again in here with the reverb. Yeah, really nice. It's really nice, the, uh, the stock reverb Ableton. I mean, I use other things as well, but on, it, there's really nothing wrong with this. It sounds great. Yeah, really nice. Tambourine hat loop, okay. So this is just something to complement the shaker. Really nice, quite driving. It definitely needs a side chain. A lot of low end out of that as well, so. Okay, that's about right, I think. Okay, and LFO tool. Right, let me get that in here. The shaker's panned 15 left. We'll pan this 15 right. Maybe tweak later on. Right, okay, next we've got a top loop. So yeah, this kind of like sort of glues the percussion together. So uh, yeah, I don't have this too loud in the track, but uh, yeah, it definitely helps. So yeah, we'll give it a play. Definitely giving it a dirtier sound. So we'll play that with the hats. EQ this hat folder here. I've just got like a preset EQ. Taking some frequencies out here. Minus 10 dB. On there as well. Just like sort of whistly sort of frequencies. Um, yeah, just taking them out. I will also get a glue compressor as well and we'll glue these sounds together. So we'll take a listen. So tweak the volumes a bit there. And I quite like the top loop sort of raw. I don't even want to put reverb on it. I kind of just leave it on its own. Okay, let's go back into the folder. So what have we missed? So yeah, we'll deal with the music next. Clap, crash, right, okay, we'll get the crash in. Right, about there. Okay, I think we'll extend this loop out now. Pan on the crash right a little bit. Okay, so we've got the drums in now. So basically what we're gonna do is how I got this idea started, which is with the piano loop. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I like, come about with the idea. And we've also got the MIDI as well. Yeah, so basically I was just doing some like funk piano lessons, uh, just trying to get better on the keyboard. And uh, there was like a little groove thing on the, one of the lessons, which I thought it like sounds like a really good sort of house idea. So um, I'll show you the little groove. Now it's very simple. And then I will just talk about the MIDI. Okay, so I'm gonna play this and then I'll explain it. Right, so that's the chord. Like, obviously, like we speed it up and then we tidy it up with MIDI. So I've got my left thumb on C. My right thumb is on G. We play C twice and then G once. And then we're playing a B flat perfect fourth there, it's telling me. Then we go like this. It's a B flat perfect fifth. Back to this, B flat perfect fourth, and 
then we drop to here. Which is the G perfect fourth. I'll do this slowly. And then we just do a walk and north. D, B flat, C. You've got like a sort of bluesy funk sort of groove to it. And then we repeat it. Well, instead of doing this walk, we'll just like sort of hit the chords like to give it more of a sort of funky sound. And it doesn't sound as repetitive. So one last time. Okay, that's it. So basically that was enough for me to go, right, we're going to make a funky house track out of this. So this is uh, like the loop that I recorded. Really nice, really funky. It's got like a sort of bluesy sort of vibe to it, which means you can add some more piano like fills and stuff like that and give it like a sort of bluesy sound. So yeah, I'll be doing that at the end of the video, like doing an improvised jam and I'll be leaving that MIDI available as well. But we've got the MIDI for this as well. So look, we've got it here. I've just got a copy of uh, Addictive Keys there. Um, we'll bounce it to audio. I've only got the trial version here. I do like the way it sounds though. It's really nice, uh, really nice VST. And I just like the default setting. So I'll just play this. Okay, cool. Right, so let's take a look at the MIDI then. This is it. It's just like it, it happens twice over. This is um this is the full bar. It happens again, but like it's just like it's the same, but like these are a little bit longer and like sort of things are different. So it's like it sounds live. I've kind of kept it as live sounding as possible. <laughs> a really sort of catchy sound and like i say we're not playing big chords like we're funk we're playing kind of double stops like just like two notes that harmonize with each other and you're kind of creating grooves within the scale right okay so that's the midi so i can delete that and like i say i'm just using the audio it's literally the same thing it just saves me bouncing it out i'm going to try this with just the kick Okay, definitely needs an EQ. Side chain once again. We'll get like a minute's worth of groove here. Yeah, so we'll filter the piano in, probably a halfway. Okay, next we'll talk about the bass then. So we'll go back into the folder. Now I've recorded um, like a live bass. I'll show you what I've done. I've, I'll also show you the MIDI as well. In fact, I'll show you the MIDI first. So we'll actually just go to, um, we'll go to instruments, go to operator, go to bass. Right, we'll get the guitar bass. And we'll get the MIDI. So there we go, here's the notes. It's just following the piano. So C, drop to G. A sharp, D sharp, C, A sharp, C. Yeah, I mean, once again, it's easier just to show you it. But yeah, it's just following the piano. Right, so I'm going to play the piano and the bass so you can hear them working together. So there you go, I've got a nice sort of funky groove to it. Something that's going to get your foot tapping. So there you go, that's the MIDI for that. Now I recorded uh, I recorded that bass on my bass guitar. So I'll show you the guitar now. Yeah, so I just used this uh, Squire P bass. I bought it about a month ago. I've been using it like for my sample packs. It's an amazing, really amazing bass guitar. Right, cool. So yeah, we'll get this bass. So this is the one I recorded. I'll play it now, it sounds good. <laughs> like a hammer on like on the end of it so i'm going to try that with the piano now yeah, 
definitely got a funky vibe to it. So what we can do with this base, and I'll actually process it and bounce it out, because I know not everyone might have this plugin. But I'm going to use a plugin by Waves called Max Bass. And it's just a really good way of adding sub to your bass without like layering it. Um, but yeah, I got this off a Jar Funk tutorial. I've mentioned it before, but it's really good. So I've put it on this preset here. And we'll turn it off and on, and uh, you can hear it. And when I turn it on, you'll hear like how much sub it gives it. So this is off. Turn it on. Really good. And we can tweak the taste here. We don't have to have as much. But that's all right for now. So um, we'll add a side chain. Actually, what I will do now, I'm using Waves plugins. I'm going to bounce this to audio. So even if you like download this file, you'll have the processed like sort of loops of this. And you can go on and sample them. Yes, it's another really nice thing in Waves. It's like a sort of guitar amp. So I'll show you it. It's just this guitar amp. I've used it for a long time. Um, sometimes I use CLA bass as well. So what we'll do, we'll go to bass. And um, I like this preset here, ACTV Presence. Okay, so I've just tweaked that a little bit there. I'd always like mess around with this as I was building a track. This really adds like a nice touch to it. So I'll turn it off and on. It's giving it like a dirtier sound. Right, so I'm going to freeze and flatten it. And actually what I'm going to do with these uh, side chains is actually make them a little bit shorter. So I'm actually going to do this because we're playing like a funkier sort of record. I don't really want it sort of pumping too hard like I've sort of filled with Disco House. Be like the, the kicks are quite short in funky house and disco so we can kind of get away we can probably afford to like do this so i've done that with the piano and i'm going to do the same thing with the bass it's not quite as sort of pumping but i think this should give a nicer effect so like we'll, we'll play it with a kick yeah it seems to fit nicely that i'll try it with the piano Like that so i'm going to flatten those side chains there on the bass and the piano right so i'm going to group up the kick and the bass so i've grouped them up there i'm just going to put a glue compressor on these two things and just like sort of glue them together so i've got a preset carl kick and bass compressor i'll leave this on right so we're just going to play the kick and the bass together Okay, I'll try with everything else. That's grooving along nicely. That. So what we're going to do, we'll, we'll actually put an auto filter on this piano because it doesn't repeat all the time. We'll do that now. Uh, audio effects. You would get the auto filter, throw it on. We'll solo the piano. Like, I'd probably start the track like that. It, like, if it kicked in, like, after the intro, I'd probably kick it out like it had a little bit on like that. There's definitely something you can filter in, as opposed to just having it on, like, playing all the time. Anyway, that's that. So we'll put that in halfway through, just for the sake of this groove, like the example. And we'll put a slight curve on it. So I'm holding Alt. You put your cursor on the, uh, the line, hold Alt sort of bend up and down like on the sort of keypad the mouse pad that's cool right actually while we're on filters and um, we'll get another filter i'm going to put this on the master channel so i've got a limiter on here you just like you see you can use any limiter that's just to give it some volume so what we we'll do we're going to click this band and we're going to bring this to like 120 130 hertz or 120 and we can bump the resonance a bit maybe put it at like 25 and we can turn this off and on so we're going to basically make it like a dj sort of sound where he's like messing around with the filters this is a good way to keep the track interesting so yeah i'll press a automation this off and on button here i'm clicking it there which is activating it here which means i can control it now 
and um, yeah, so it's off here. And I'm only doing a basic thing here, just to keep it groovy. <laughs> So we'll just do that through this groove. We'll keep it the same all the way through. you can see i've just matched it all the way through there so basically the filter's coming on here putting out the subs and then kicking back in so there you go it's made that a little bit more interesting okay so the piano filters in comes in halfway right so we're going back into the folder right so we're back into the folder let's see oh yes yeah, so we've got some more stuff with the bass so i was on about them pop slides and uh, like yeah, bass pops uh yeah i recorded these separate but these were done on the guitar as well so we'll get this in so this is the first one take a listen to it on its own it's a nice sound it's just like a funky sound there we go so we'll put this underneath the bass and i think we can put this in sort of here in this groove we won't have it in straight away play the kick the sub bass and the new bass pop we've put in so uh yeah i'll play it from here I think just repeat that throughout that'll sound cool just grooving along and with the bass slide as well that'll keep it interesting so yeah so here we go right that's definitely working so yeah slight eq we don't really need the subs out of this. Right, okay, I'll just colour it up. There's no point complicating things. So, yeah, so bass slide, that's what we've got next. Now, I know this is going to happen on the end of every... I don't want this all the time, so one there. The way this happens, I'll get this up here. We wouldn't want this to clash with the other bass, so I'll, I'll actually play it first. It's just a basic slide. But as you can see, when this slide happens here, the, like the bass still happens here, so we might as well just give it its own space. But simply just cut it. So if I play the bass from here... Uh, and the slide I'll actually play the pop as well because it's part of it now um yeah you're gonna hear what this is doing so i'll play it from here there you go just again giving it a funkier sound right so we'll play that with the drums and everything else <laughs> So we'll just repeat that then. Right, so that's all the bass parts in then. Yeah, so we can move on. Right, so what next? What can we do? Uh, right, so we've got the guitar. Where's the guitar at? Here we go. So yeah, I've recorded this guitar. Um, I've just recorded like a C minor 7 chord. Yeah, so we're just jamming on that chord. So I'll play that with the uh, the piano. So as the piano's going like ba ba like that like the the guitar's reinforcing it it's like actually layering up with it making it sound thicker or it's like just working together with it yeah, so i'll play it again and as you'll hear like they happen at the same time right so that's nice so what i'll do i'll group these up now what i'm going to do is add another reverb actually one for the music so i'll get one out of uh, ableton reverb we'll just get a standard reverb again be all right 100 percent leave that like that we'll give that a try yeah i like it i'm going to pan the guitar right i'll do a little bit of processing to it and then sort of bounce it the audio um okay so i'm going to get some waves plugins on here and make this guitar sound a bit better so i'm going to use this plugin called ssl it's just a channel strip but the only thing i use it for really is the guitar preset it really makes the guitar sit nice so again i'll bounce this to audio so you have this process guitar loop we'll give it a listen and we'll turn it off and on okay so this is off and this is on 
giving it a really nice, giving it a bit more bite now. So after that, I'll go to EQ, we'll go to Ableton. We've got an Ableton preset. We've got EQ8, instruments, and then funky electric guitar. I like this preset. And there we go. So just keep that like that. Okay, cool. And a little bit of side chain. Then we'll put it here like that. Nothing too sort of pumping. What I'll also do is get another EQ. I don't want too much of that bright sort of uh, high end. Get the second EQ. So we'll play some here and then we'll hear the guitar coming in. Okay, so that's alright. So that's what happens then. We've got the piano gets filtered in, the bass pop comes in. The guitar comes in halfway through. So the next part of this is adding a string. So the string will come in three quarters of the way through, but we'll filter it in. Right, so I've just got a single C string here, so I'll play it. Yeah, we'll EQ it now. Once again with the side chain. Let's get that automation on there. So we'll get the auto filter and we'll get that filtered into like three quarters of the way. So press it, activate this band here just by moving it right to the bottom point here. Basically where this crash comes in, we'll put it in full. With a click and then just drag it down. Hold alt on the line. Curve like that. So there we go. That's another thing in. I mean, we're close now. I'll definitely do like an improvised jam over the top. And I'll record the MIDI and I'll leave the MIDI as well so you can have all these sort of... I don't even know what riffs I'm going to do yet, but um, they'll all be available in the pack as well. Just some little fills and stuff. But there we go. So I can play this from here. And uh, yeah, so the string's going to come in three quarters of the way in here. <laughs> So let's keep going through this folder. I don't think we've got much left. We've got a brass dab, so we'll get this in here. Let's just add this every now and then. We'll see where we can place this. Yeah, there we go. That's cool. I'll probably put some delay and uh, reverb on that, so we'll get that there. We'll put that there as well. Yeah, because we've got one more music thing. We've got the organ sort of riff as well, haven't we? So, right, so this has got reverb on it now. We'll try this from here. Try that with the bass line. Stab. I'll do it now actually. So delay, echo, or do, yeah, I'll just get delay. Ping pong on it. Drop it to 30 and 30. Cool. I'll hear that with everything else. <laughs> Okay, 
here and I think we've only got one more thing left. Let's have a look. Oh, I've got the horn sweep as well. Oh yeah. All right, so we can get that in. Actually, we'll put this, this here. This will work nicely with the brass stab, actually. It'll uh, blend in nice. It's just like a sort of sweep and it's in C, so um, it should be keyed up nicely. Maybe do it like add a fade like that and turn it down. Um, I'll just highlight the um, brass stab and the horn sweep here. That works, yep. Yeah, so there's the organ, ring stab, tambourine hat, top loop. Yeah, so this is the last thing here. So it's just like a little organ riff. It's cool. You're hearing a lot of funk records. Uh, so it definitely gives like an old vintage sound. Um, I'll play it on its own. Very simple. I've just got it from a sample pack. It's got a bit of crackle on it. Sounds old. So yeah, we're going to add this on the end of each of these here. Put that there. Actually, get this in the folder. Get the EQ on now, actually. Yeah, take a lot of that. That's all we want there. Right, okay, so let's just try that, like, just the music folder, and we'll listen now for the organ riff here. on the music folder okay that's cool okay so that's pretty good as far as samples now i'll probably add like a crash fill a drum fill um do some variation and a breakdown sort of thing but i'm going to play this all the way through for you and then i'm going to do an improvised piano jam i'll record the midi and uh, i'm going to leave that available as well <laughs> Okay guys, let's do this last little bit then. So yeah, we'll get these little riffs in. So we'll go to addictive keys again. So it's in the C minor scale, so I kind of know the C pentatonic scale, like I know it pretty well. So um, I'm just gonna play some stuff in this pattern. So yeah, okay, no idea what I'm gonna play, but I'm gonna record it and it's gonna be available for you guys. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs>
Right, there you go, guys. Super random, all over the place. But there's plenty of riffs in there to maybe spice up your piano groove. So there you go. We've thrown that in there as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. This is the first of many videos I'm going to be doing in this Let's Make series. So, um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, take it easy, guys. I'll see you very soon for the next video. All right, peace out.